Can't believe Sal's is gone. This place is an institution. It's the best pizza in the neighborhood. From small local diners to corporate chains to beloved fast food joints, few restaurants were spared from the effects of the last couple of years. So let's check in on 10 beloved restaurants we might sadly lose in 2022. Pie Five. At Pi Five, everyone creates their own pizza. There's no sharing. Despite the growth and popularity of carryout during the last couple of years, Pi Five may not be able to make it through the year. Pi Five isn't your typical pizza carryout and delivery restaurant. Instead, it focuses on fast casual dining, with customers picking their toppings at a counter in the Chipotle manner and watching their pies being loaded with ingredients and baked. Pi Five also has a sister restaurant that is struggling as well, Pizza Inn, and both have been in financial trouble for some years. Delivery companies like Domino's and Papa John's witnessed significant revenue boosts during the past years. Despite early promise, the Pi Five model has been dogged by issues for years, a pattern that has continued to last. In 2015, the brand opened restaurants in a number of additional states, surpassing 100 locations. But now, just 30 31 stores remain operating as of December 2021. We're broke! The causes behind Pi 5's failures were not all related to recent events either. Instead, a number of factors, ranging from bad marketing to fierce competition, are likely to have played a role. While a few shops are still open, it might not be long until those looking for fast casual pizza have to turn to chains like Rapid Fired. Pizza Inn Pizza without mushrooms, white pizza stay. I... Pizza Inn was established in Dallas in 1958 and is largely found in the southern portion of the United States. Pan pizzas, as well as garlic bread, spaghetti, and stromboli are all on the menu. The loss of foot traffic over the last years hit Pizza Inn quite severely, as it did most establishments. While other pizza restaurants may have prospered as more customers choose to have meals delivered to their houses, this chain's financial issues intensified in 2020 and remained into 2021. The greatest impact was seen at Pizza Inn's buffet outlets. Even before 2020, the company was having issues. Rave Restaurant Group Inc., the firm behind the brand, suffered an 18% reduction in revenue in 2019. How are we losing money? The business had 155 pizza inns in the United States at the time, as well as 48 overseas locations, mostly in the Middle East. Pizza Inn fans may have to search elsewhere for their Alfredo cheese pizzas if the trend continues. Just like Pi 5, Pizza Inn has been struggling for quite some time, and 2022 may be the final nail in the coffin for this American pizza chain. The Lost Cajun I love Cajun cooking. Since 2010, the Lost Cajun has been serving southern specialties, including fried catfish, po'boys, gumbo, red beans and rice, and more. The business was founded in Frisco, Colorado, despite serving New Orleans-inspired cuisine. Raymond Griffin, a Louisiana native who migrated to the region at the request of his terminally sick wife, founded the franchise. The chain has evolved from a single location with only four menu items to 24 sites in six states. Despite its early success, the business was forced to apply for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in April 2021. Bankruptcy! The cause is a decline in overall sales, for reasons we're all aware of by now. Raymond Griffin, the Lost Cajun's founder and proprietor, remained upbeat, however, and doesn't think the chain is done for just yet. It might not be the case, though, if the problems created by loss of sales and employee shortages can continue. Burger King. Really? Burger King? Burger King was founded in 1953, but it wasn't known as BK at the time. The franchise's name was Instaburger. After some financial issues, two Miami-based franchisees bought the existing location and renamed the chain Burger King. The main menu item at Burger King is their famous burger known as the Whopper. The Whopper was once the biggest seller of the fast food burgers, but is now regularly outsold by McDonald's and other fast food giants, and is slowly being being demoted in the market. You can't sell hamburgers here. This is a Burger King. This has caused a drop in sales and a loss of market share, which hasn't been good for the famous fast food chain. Now, we're not saying that BK will completely vanish. I mean, after almost 70 years in business, Burger King may be too big to fail, but that might depend on where you live. 
Burger King announced it was closing up to 250 stores in 2019, which began quickly and continued for many years forward. Burger King officials indicated the business aims to shutter 200 to 250 low-volume stores every year over the next few years. Boston Market You all laughed when I suggested Boston Market. If you're like most people, it's been a long time since you visited a Boston market. The brand of fast-service comfort food eateries is loved for saving you from the constraints of preparing nightly family meals. Since its peak in the early 1990s, when it had over 1,100 outlets dispersed among micro-malls and shopping centers across the country, business has dropped by over 60%. Boston Market was pegged to follow in the footsteps of Chipotle and Panera Bread as the next big, small chain success story. That ideal would shatter into a million pieces in less than a decade, leaving the business insolvent, shutting stores, and scrambling to put it all back together. What what happened and what caused this once powerful chain to file for bankruptcy? After a successful IPO in the early 1990s, the firm used the funds earned in the first public stock offering to swiftly expand the number of sites to over 1,200. Boston Market would lend the money to franchisees, who would then pay a franchise fee, royalties on their food sales, and interest on the loans to the corporation. Easy money. Boston Market declared this revenue as pure profit, allowing franchisees to avoid standard restaurant launch fees, driving the stock even higher and enabling the chain to establish more locations. Problems began to occur when each of these separate establishments made standard business mistakes, such as overpaying for merchandise, unduly discounting menu items, or overspending for real estate. Boston Market eventually found it impossible to manage the daily operations of each of these separate stores, and had to reduce the number of outlets to around 460 outlets throughout the country. Denny's. See you at Denny's? Denny's is for winners. Hundreds of eateries that were forced to close temporarily in March of 2020 will sadly never reopen. While small companies have been hit the hardest, even large chains have been affected. And while some restaurants have managed to stay alive in recent years by offering delivery and takeout, franchise operators and businesses have lately revealed plans to close failing locations. Before March 2020, several casual eateries, including TGI Fridays, had announced substantial closures. But recent events have hastened the decision of many companies to permanently close their doors. Since the beginning of 2020, many Denny's locations have been struggling hard. Some of the franchisees have had to close their restaurants because of the difficult financial situation. Denny's has been assisting its franchise owners in getting through these difficulties, but the final choice to close is up to each franchise owner and their specific circumstances. What's your decision? I don't know. The situation is still fluid, and they're working in conjunction with all of the franchisees to ensure that their companies and people are protected. But the number of Denny's locations is dropping, so things could go either way. Friendlies. You said you were that waitress from Friendly's! I lied! After having its comeback plans disrupted, Friendly's, the historic East Coast restaurant brand known for its frozen desserts, has filed for bankruptcy. In November 2020, the Massachusetts-based firm filed for bankruptcy, but intended to sell the brand to a restaurant investment organization for around $2 million. In January 2021, the sale went through with Friendly's anticipating virtually all of its 130 30 stores to remain open. The 85-year-old brand had been working for roughly two years to reinvigorate its business by shutting unproductive locations, revising its menu, and concentrating more on takeaway and delivery. But the pandemic put an end to those efforts. We are doomed. Unfortunately, like many restaurants, their development was abruptly disrupted by the impact, which caused a revenue decrease as dine-in operations were halted for months and reopened with limited capacity. Despite the company's financial difficulties, all of Friendly's almost 10,000 workers are expected to keep their employment since the sale. As the events of 2020 vacated dining rooms throughout the country, several major restaurant companies filed for bankruptcy protection. In the wake of the situation, Ruby Tuesday, Chuck E. Cheese, and Sizzler Steakhouses have all filed for Chapter 11 protection. Le Pain Quotidien 
Bread for sale, bread for sale. Le Pain Quotidien is among the many large restaurant chains battling to stay afloat these days, with the bread chain's European owner threatening to pull out of the United States altogether. The 98 Le Pain Quotidien sites in the United States would be sold to a New York City corporation under a reorganization proposal, with 35 outlets remaining operational. Le Pain Quotidien New York, the company's U.S. branch, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in Delaware after citing the impact of nationwide restrictions. Recently, the firm, which employs 2,500 people in the United States, temporarily shuttered 93 of its facilities. According to the restructuring plans for Le Pen Quotidien outlined in the bankruptcy petition, two-thirds of those outlets will never reopen. Orify Brands, which operates other restaurants such as Fields Good Chicken and Five Guys, is interested in buying Le Pen Quotidien's U.S. outlets. How much? How much? According to court records, Orify plans to revive at least 35 Le Pen outlets and rehire some employees. The sales must be approved by a bankruptcy judge. According to a bankruptcy filing, Le Pen Quotidien's U.S. operations began to decrease and losses grew and sales plummeted. In big market cities like New York City, earnings dropped due to falling client visitation, rising rents, and severe competition. In addition, the chain was hesitant to adopt new technology such as smartphone ordering. Consumers had moved further towards the grab-and-go model, which enabled for speedier transactions by employing a streamlined menu and a larger amount of self-service. Luby's Luann is out of business. Luby's is a Texas-based restaurant that declared it was going bankrupt last year owing to 2020's catastrophic impact. The company, which also owns the Fuddruckers franchise, was winding down business with plans to dissolve. However, instead of an inevitable end, the company was able to sell the corporate-owned Luby's cafeteria and Fuddruckers sites in separate deals. Luby's sold its 32 restaurants to a new investor, and the Fuddruckers brand was sold to another investor. These locations are still open, predominantly in the South and Midwest, and are spread across 25 states. We always survive. With Luby's getting a reprieve, I guess this doesn't mean the end of the road for the brand known for its Luan platters, as well as other Southern-style foods that have been served for almost seven decades. That's good news, since prior to these sales, the firm intended to close most of its restaurants before the end of its financial year in August. Ruby Tuesdays It's Ruby Tuesday. Rocky Tarantula. Ruby Tuesday is another sit-down dining restaurant that has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, facing the same long-term issues as other casual dining franchises. The company says it has reached an accord with its secured creditors to support its restructuring and wants to use the debt-cutting approach to restore its finances and continue in business. However, in a court filing, it was stated that the firm had permanently closed 185 locations that were shuttered due to familiar circumstances. The network now has 236 company-owned and operated stores, as well as an unspecified number of franchisee-operated sites. Ruby Tuesday's chief marketing officer stated they do not expect any other restaurant closures at this time. At all of their present sites, they are dedicated to providing safe, high-quality experiences for their customers. But Ruby Tuesdays has been suffering for years due to increasing competition with other cash casual dining and fast food restaurants. Are we losing? Ribs, steaks, seafood, poultry, appetizers, and a garden bar are among the company's specialties. The firm, based in Maryville, Tennessee, at one time employed roughly 7,000 people. Despite initiatives to expand delivery and takeaway, develop virtual kitchens, and offer food through its website, the firm, which relied on sit-down eating for more than 90% of its revenues, was unable to adjust quickly enough to the changing market. It's safe to say that things aren't looking good for this once popular casual dining chain. Stay right here and tap or click another great video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.